Ah, tu dia pesuruh kembali, sok sebaik deh. I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for um, for participating in your interview with us. Uh, let's start by introducing yourself. Okay. Uh, the first thing, I'm so sorry because my English is not good enough to to speak it out. But somehow it's, it's not clear. Please don't join me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, my name is... Uh, Nieng Thao, yeah, and I'm from Cambodia. As uh, I here, I'm come to Canada by uh, immigrant, a refugee in the camp. Yeah. Where, which city were you were, uh, were you born? Uh, in Cambodia, in, Cambodia? in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Yeah, Phnom Penh. Yeah. Um, what is uh, when is your birthday? Uh, my birthday, December 10, 55. Yeah, 1955. How many brothers and sisters? I have three brothers and two sisters, three include me. Yeah, like our three brothers, three sisters, yeah, together. Yeah. Are you the oldest or the uh, I'm the older one, yeah. Can you tell us about your childhood when you were younger? What was it like? Uh, in my back home, in my childhood, I am a lucky one. Sorry. Good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean it. But when I talk about that, I remember everything that I... When I talk about that, I always remember what I've been through and what I passed, that I lost all my member, my family member, that's why I made me cry. <laughs> When I'm young, when I'm small, I'm not really stay with my parents. Uh, I'm I've been with stay with my grandparents as my guardian, but they love me so much, they spoil me so much. And my aunt and my uncle we live together in the big house. Like we are, we have everything. We live in the good, you know, like the good family. Like I'm not very rich, but we mean like a bit high than medium. And like we have everything. We be happy, be peaceful, be fun, and be happy. Like he gave me everything what I need, what I want. He never said no from my grandparents. No, I cannot see them no more. <laughs> more. I lost them in that time, in the community time. They killed them. <laughs> My arms, my ankle. <laughs> I never seen the period. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I. No, I'm fine. I think I'm fine right now.
I don't have a good life and before the communist state over my country. I do have a good life, have a good family, and have everything that I need. They support me all any time that I, I, I tell them. Yeah. And my father, he worked for the good position in the government. And I am in school, I'm a student. I am grade 10 back home before the country have a revolution. And it before the communist takes over, like the country already, you know, like start to be like not normal. And my father, he he will move to the countryside from the capital to the countryside. That uh, his job has supposed to to control where that they, his boss had to send him to do it. And I moved to the, my father moved to the, uh, the countryside and next to the Thailand country. Yeah, and I lived there for uh, um, I think maybe not even two years yet. And then communists, they come take over everything. And they force everybody to go, you know, they get out from the house, from the city, from the capital, from everything. And we live in the farm and in the bush and where that they have to push you to go. Yeah. Before I get to there, where did, uh, where did your parents work? Uh, what my, type of job did they do? Uh, he is a police secret. Okay, yeah. so he's like a secret agent? Uh, uh, not an agent. Spy? Uh, he he kind of like that, yeah. But he in the good, he the top one that like, with the, in his uh, office, and he is the top. He the head one, yeah. He the head one, yeah. And what about your mother? Uh, my mom, she working in the market. She is a business person. She don't have high education, but she work in the market like you know her business with the market, yeah. And. We have a big house in the capital, and but since from that time, my dad he have to go for his job at the countryside because that time is uh, we have problem with Thailand. They come to um, they they come to to my country to you know like they steal, they steal and you know like we have in in that place we have a lot a lot of uh, big big tree that we keep for many years ago, and they want to steal that. And that my father, he had to control and to look after that. Because the people work over there, they cannot, they cannot capture them until my dad come. And they capture a lot of Thai people, they come to steal our tree. Yeah. And after it's uh, when the communists take over and everything, it, Finish. And they, I have to live in the booth with my family, with my parents, my brother, sister. And that time I get very sick. And I get swelling. I cannot move. And my, my parents had to put me in the car to pull me. <laughs> but he did not pull me too far because he's not strong enough. <laughs> and then on the way that we go, it's not a good road that we have to go, we have bumping and rock and, you know, the hole, everything. And he had to put me down. And I he had to make the stick from the bamboo for me to try to, you know, just step, like, be slip under the rain and carry some, you know, like, small bag that we can because we 
we cannot take everything with us when they uh, when they force us to go away from everything. And until we, we walk until we reach to the the canal because we cannot cross where the water is coming up. And we ask them like uh, I, I don't know how to call like the Khmeru that they control us. We're asking them if we can have a small boat to across the, the, the canal. They said, you know what they said? They said, you are from, I don't know how to say in English, they said, that you're not allowed to have those things. You've been like, you are, the way you live before, you have been spoiled. Now you have to do, to do whatever you you can. Because they were coming from the rich family. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to to support us anything. And that time, uh, not only my my parents, the, the people they come together. They they have some. They have a knife. Some they have uh, whatever the small. Uh, maybe cut the bamboo. Because on the way that I go in the the bush, we have a lot of bamboo tree, like big big one, and we cut that and we try to rip some piece of the wire from the tree to tie it and to make like a small boat put on the river to uh, to pull all the kid from this side to that side. And when the water flow, we have to flow by the water to hit on the side. And my dad he. They do the, everything to bring the, the kid go across the, the canal. And when we get on that side, uh, kind of like it, you go up to the, the canal, it down and up there. And we have to climb up because the, the rain is slippery. And I cannot go up. And my dad had to touch me and pull me from down to up. Until when all the kids get safety up there, and he, we had to walk uh, to the spot that they tell us to stay, and when, and when we get there, and they, we don't have anything, no food, no nothing. But my mom, she keep carry the, the what she have. But they made, she made the, what do you call the small bag, like long one to carry by, you know. The bag. She has some a little bit dry and salt. And she boil it and gave to the kid <laughs> with the salt. <laughs> and she gave me more than my brother and sister because she said, I'm sick. She want me to be, you know, have energy to go. <laughs> and then when we, uh, everybody up there and we live, you know, like they, they, they separate from group to group. It's like in my group, I think we have about 30 family and uh, we start to build a small, you know, like small place to stay. We had to grab the grass or grab whatever we have, you know, that we can to build a small one to, uh, you know, to stay, like, protect the rain, protect whatever the wind. And I cannot do anything because my, my body is swelling and I just stay in there all the time. Only my, my father, my parents and my brother, my sister have to, you know, go around and find something that they can, they can do it. They do give us the, the company, they do give us the, the, the right to eat, to eat, but it's not enough. In one family, I think they give like three cans, right? Yeah. 
uh, for I think in, I I don't remember for uh, probably maybe a week something. Yeah, only three can. And my my mom she had to boil and mix with the veggie that we pick up from the, you know, from the book that we know that we can eat. We mix together, and boil and give to the family to eat. So you're saying three, you, they gave you three cans? Just yeah, for one three family. can, yeah, for one family. Three can of boil, like, uh, you know, the, uh, the like, milk container? It's this big and this high, yeah. Yeah, for, for each family. And, uh, and after, I think about, after about three months, and they, they tell us we have to go work in the farm, in the field. And uh, my mom, my dad, my brother, my brother go. Um, they take my brother to look after the cow in the field. Uh, to my two brother, look after the cow in the field, and uh, my sister, they take away from my pet, my the family to, to stay in the like the girl group, the, all the kids, young, like not teenager. It's uh, like the kid. I think for that time from. Eight years old, something, put in the group, stay together, and have to work too, work in the farm too. Have to pull the grass, have to carry this, to carry that, and what they, they want you to do it, you have to do it. But you cannot stay with your parents. You have to stay with the group that they made you to stay. And after that, uh, I think after that, I don't remember how many months, uh, they take my sister, my second sister away to work far away from, from the group. And my sister, she'd been very sick. My parents had to go pick her up. And when she come back, it, the rain is very, very hot. She cannot pass, the, you know, like the road, it's a lot of water up here. And my, my parents had to sleep half her body is on the hill and her body in the water. And he have whatever, what the creature in the water that stay in her, in his lake. They're very, very tiny to stay in the water. But when my dad wake up, that creature small become big like this. And they suck you all your blood. Yeah. And he said, okay, he said, bring my sister back home. But when my sister get home, only one week, my dad passed away. And after my dad passed away, even I'm not, even not feel good yet, they still take me away from my mom. I think we've been like, uh, if we talk sin from, I think maybe happened from that. They suck all of his blood, and then we don't have enough food, we don't have enough anything. Like, he felt exhausted because he had to walk and carry, you know, like, my, bring my sister home because carry by the, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, she bring, when he bring my sister, I think she, he's suffering with those things. And he cannot fight with his, you know, like, his body not strong enough to stay. Only two day, two night that he can knock, he cannot speak, he cannot eat, he cannot anything. We have no medicine. And he... And after, they take me away from my mom. 
but they tell me how to go to work, but I cannot go to work because I cannot walk. And they keep me in the in the hospital. It's not a hospital like here, it's just like a, like a house. They build like a, a house and just put the, all the flat wood and you sleep there. And every morning uh, they have the like them nurse something, they bring the medicine from, but the medicine they not like here medicine. They make from, I don't know, something. They, 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 they around like this big and they gave me to take every day. And soon or later, I just, you know, I, I just asked like the old people that they know some any med boost medicine, I can take it. And sometimes my mom had to, uh, to find from, you know, from what she know. And she bought it, she bring for me to drink. Because we had to take me away from my mom, it's not too far from my mom. My mom, she still can walk to see me. And some old people that they know me and they, uh, they want to help. They bring some, you know, like boom medicine. Then when they, after they boil it, the water they bring for me to drink. And I get better and better. And all the swelling like go down and I can walk, but I still walk with the stick. And I think about a few months. This time they take me away from my mom. I cannot see, I cannot come to see her. But still when I, when I stay with them, I had to work, but that time we worked at a sugar cane farm. And a sugar cane farm and then uh, with the veggie farm that I work with them. And when I go there, when they know people, I always, you know, like uh, sneaky and like, I always break the, the rule, them rule. I always break it because I, you know what I see, I remember my mom and I always take it and then hiding. And some, sometime before night time, I still walk in the, you know, like walk in the booth, not on the road to bring those to my mom. But I know she did it. And three times, I still, I sneaky to see my mom and they know it. And after, they sent me away, far away. <laughs> and they been calling me and warning, I cannot do that again. If I keep doing that, they will kill me. <laughs> And this time I'm very far away from my mom. I cannot see, I cannot. Only I can ask my mom by messenger because it's, uh, they, we have the guy, have the cow cart. They bring right up and down for, for the people, work in, the <coughs> work in the field. And sometimes I, I I, when I have the paper, sometimes I write it down a little bit and I roll it like a cigar and give to them, please give to my mom. I just tell her like how I feel, like I'm okay. Don't, don't want my mom to worry about me. <laughs> and When, that time, when I stay far from my mom, I think I don't remember how many months. And I kind of like, I'm stronger because my mom said she wants me to be stronger because she said she don't know when it happened to her. She wants me to be stronger to take care of my brother and sister. And since from that time, I talk to myself, I have to be stronger, have to be stronger. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But I still break the rule 
Bem Rool. And uh, I've been three, four times warning and torching. And they said, maybe one day they will kill me because I, I always break the rule. Uh, no, they don't, they don't beat me. They just want me to work more and more and don't give food. Yeah, don't give food to eat and I have to work day and night. Get up early, morning five, uh, three, four, morning. Work in the field, like from start from five o'clock until, you know, late, late afternoon when people, they, they back to the, the camp or to the house and I still there. And time they had to work overnight from 7 to 12, and I had to be there. But and then one day, I pray to my dad. I tell him if if you still there, please support me. And I think maybe happened is uh, what I pray to him maybe is. He know that. And like that time they, they had to pick up who that they who that they not married, who don't have a kid, to work to the, the the first line. And they picked me and picked some of my you know, like in my group that stay together. They put some and they send me there. When I when they send me there, I that the good uh, that the good place they have. You know, they have a lot of food. They have a lot. You know, like almost everything like before. And uh, the head of the group there, he is nice, very nice guy, and he he support us all the time. He said uh, we work hard. We have to eat enough. We have to eat good. And I live there. I think maybe uh, over almost a year something. Like my body changed. Like change to you know like change you cannot see because from the ugly to the beauty. Yeah, because we have enough food, have enough, you know, like we have you happy. And uh, but the sadness come back again because they for me to get married. I think that time I, uh, when they come over in I'm 19, around, I think around 19, 20 something, yeah, that time. And three times that they forcing me, I said, no, no. And uh, my husband right now, <coughs> because uh, we work in, in the farm together, right? And, but, you know, in, the, that, in that time, nobody want to. I only want my mom and my family. I don't want to, to get married with nobody. And I said no, three times. And one, one day, at, before noon, I just, you know, we were in the farm with grow rye. And they calling me to stay a bit far from everybody to uh, like the them soldiers, something like that. They have the, the, the long big gun. Two people it, beside me like this, and they asking me, said, do I agree to get what they're telling me to do, or I don't? I cannot say anything. And I just crying, crying, and I almost fell down on the ground. And uh, the lady in my group, 
she see that she come to pull me out. She said, please, uh, just let's see, you know, let's see decide and let's see calm down whatever she can say to them. And they let me go. And I've been sick one week. I don't eat, I don't sleep one week. I've been sick. And uh, my, my group, she understand that because we are come from the same, you know, back home. She always explain and tell me, support me, everything. And I try to remember what my mom said. I had to believe for my brother and sister. And after one week at night time, they called me one more time to the kitchen that they cook for everybody. And this time it uh, is another head, the group, and then uh, the still have two, two guns beside me on this. They said, now they want to know yes or no from me. I keep crying, but I still remember what my mom said, and I said yes. And after that, about, uh, I think about six weeks, we get married. Not only one couple, 11 couple at the same time. And I get married from that time. And then uh, uh, later they have to, when I finish the field over there, they send me to back to where the first place that I stay. I come with my husband and with all my group, come back home. And uh, I see my, my mom a, a little bit. And my brother, my sister, they still not with my mom because they take away from my mom. And uh, that time I'm not work in the farm. They want me to to make a, like a canal for the water. They take the water from the river for the farm. They don't wait for the rain, and they don't have like machine like you know put the water for the farm. And they want everybody dig the very deep down, and I had to work there. And but when I work there, I'm not my husband not with me. He had to work in the farm, at home, and I had to work over there. It's far away. And one day he gets sick, and he sent a message by the cow cart. Uh, tell me that he said he want me to come home and I go to other head of the group. Can I come home to see my husband because he's sick? They said, no, I cannot. It, I'm not allowed to. And that time I'm okay. And I thinking, I said, why? Someone can do it and I cannot do it. And then one, uh, like almost every Every two weeks, they have the big meeting, night time after work, and they bring something to say everybody. And that that night, I fight with the head of the group. I fight with them, and they bring they bring up to speak about me, to tell like everybody don't don't do like me, because I break the rule. And I keep thinking the first the, the first speak I don't yeah, I don't get it. And then when they call and my name, I said, oh, that is me. And then I said, from now, I don't, I don't care. If they have to kill me, I don't care. I'm not afraid to die. And at night time, I go ask the head again. I said, can I go see my husband or not? And this time he said, he said OK, I can go. But I cannot go at the daytime. I have to go at night time. And at night time, walk in the bush. I don't see anything. Only I see that time. I see the uh, the moon, and the moon is in not uh, 15 days yet. But I still can see bright from the moon. And I walk with the bush. And but uh, the same time, the the guy I know he young, but he know my mom. He know my dad. Um, uh, he know my mom, know my brother, sister, and she have to, he had to go to bring the rice. And he, he asking me to come with him on the cow cart. I don't need to walk. Only him and me alone in the, you know, the middle of the night in the, at, in the booth. 
and till I reach home, and I see my husband, he lie down, like he almost not moving. And morning, my mother-in-law, uh, I asking her she have to go find someone that they know to make the medicine, to find medicine to heal my husband. Uh, but after one day, the middle of the night, they still come to call me, to call me to go back where I have to work. And I said, can I stay a few more days until my husband get better? She said, no, I can't. I have to go back. And they said, if I go with them now, they can, you know, like uh, tran transportation, like we don't have, we only have the cow cart to bring people, you know, like go everywhere. They said, they can uh, do that for me. And I answered, but I said, no. I come back with my bare foot. When I go back, I can go by my bare foot. You don't have to do, to, to do that for me. And I go to talk to the the leader that the the place my husband stay. I tell him everything that I want to say. I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. And say, if you want to do anything to me, you can do it. This time it's up to my my head. I cannot take it. You can do what you want. I think he understand what I talk about, but he let me go. He don't do anything for me, to me. He don't hurt me. He don't do anything. He let me go. And you know, like, we live separate from that time, from my mom, my brother, sister, from my husband. Until, until the last day that, uh, uh, I think that time, like, the, <coughs> the Vietnamese, they come to you know, like to to rescue what in that time, and uh, we had to run from place to place to find each other. I had to go to my mom, to my brother, my sister, and uh, my husband. Uh, but I still have one of my brother that they send him away. We cannot find him. And until we get to the until we get to the the road, the main road that we can have, you know, easy to go back and forth. And my mom decided to come back to the place that we've been before to find my brother. And she had to go alone by herself to find my brother and all my brother and all, not only my brother. All the the young kids in the group, they still stay in the bam, bamboo booth there because they want to be safety. And my mom see my brother and bring her him back. Like we all together and we come back to the uh, to the town like in not in not a capital in Phnom Penh in countryside at uh, Bat Bong. Yeah, and we live there a few months. And uh, my mom, she decided to, you know, to write because we, we have to find the, what we have to do for the family. And my mom, she have to, have, you know, to take my, aunt, my, two, my, two, my, my young sister and my three brother to go to live by herself. You know, to do this, to do that, and find to build this, to build that, until not only my family, it like everybody, the whole country. We had to build up our life, you know, again. From that, the community, they destroy everything. But I still so sad because I lost my grandparents, my aunt, my uncle, my cousin from both sides, from my mom's side, from my dad's side. 
many many family that I lost in that time. I know uh, two uncles from my dad's side, they killing them. They, they killed the whole family. And my, from my mom's side, my uncle, my aunt, like the whole family, they killed them, like they, they cut and they put in the, the hole. Why did they decide to kill them? I don't know what happened why they killed them, but like I said, if you break, break the rule, or you, you know, even like uh, you're hungry, and you see some food in front of you, you cannot touch it. Even you touch, they can kill you anytime they want. Even you don't make mistake. If they want to kill you, they kill you with no reason. But for my aunt, my uncle, I don't know what happened. Like they killed them, I don't know because I'm away from them. And I know, I know, since from, and I'm in Canada, and I, I try to send the letter back home to find my family. That's why I know they get killed in that time. It's not I know when I dare. When I'm in Canada, the first, I think the first, no, second year in Canada, and I try. I try to write a letter to my family, but I don't know where they are. I know when I know the address where I live when I'm young. But finally, when the post office there, they get it, and they bring to my uncle. Yeah, that's why I know everybody happened. Uh, after the communists, or you mean like? During the 1979, when the Vietnamese... Uh, oh, not, I think, uh, 79. No, uh, that time, I still uh, far away from the capital, in the countryside. But uh, I don't see the Vietnamese soldier, but you know, like, uh, they, when they come, because we have the, the big, the, the main road, they coming. And like people, they stay, you know, okay, like they're on the first block or the first road, and they know they're coming. And they, they run and they come, they tell like everybody, oh, Vietnamese coming, Vietnamese coming, you have to run away. Like that. And then we hear, we hear the sound of the, the gun, because they have to, uh, Vietnamese and uh, Khmer Rouge is fighting. And then we hear the gun every child running and hiding. And uh, at the daytime, when we, we, we don't hear anything, we can, you know, like you sneaky or you can go where you can go to find all your family. We're not far away from each other, but we cannot see. Only we, we get a message from like, I know you or I know someone, they pass by, you can ask. You see my mom, you see my brother, you see my sister. And if they know, they tell you, oh, they're over there. Oh, they're on that side and on that side. And then that you, can, you can find each other. Yeah. But I'm lucky. I, I find my mom, my brother, my sister, and my husband, we are together. And that time, and we try to walk to the main road and walk to the, the city and... You know, like, not only my family, it, like, almost uh, everybody on that side, like, the whole country, they are the same. And when we walk to, uh, to the uh, Bantam Bong uh, city, and we still get, we get support from, uh, I'm not sure that, from... From the, the the government that they they break the break the Khmer Rouge because, uh, because that time we don't know anything. They just some people uh, they have we have the people they come to asking like what your name what how old are you blah blah like that, and they give you 
some uh, 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 not like they counting how many in your family and they give you some right on some uh, dry fish. So that, and you were talking about the UN. Yeah, I think maybe I, I I'm not sure that um, no I think I don't think that time maybe not yet. Maybe they did not go there yet. But because you know in 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 Khmer in communist, I think they have too many party, and when they fighting they break down, and one they go to the to the Vietnamese side, and that's why the Vietnamese army come over to rescue that time, and I think I get support from that government, that the first time when we break up the the communist party. And then until I we stay in the camp that we get support from the United Nations and the Red Cross and the, in the camp, but not inside the country, Cambodia. That what I that what I know is not my because that time we don't think about anything, only we think about the family and about life. You don't think too far. And then, you know, after that, we, we still not enough everything that we need, even the food. And we hear from the, the radio that they said, you know, like in the camp, they opened the camp at the Thai border, at Thailand and Cambodia, that they have the United Nations support. And I try, me and my husband, and that time I had my two brothers with me. We had to walk to the camp to get support. But when we get to the camp, uh, I stay about one month and a half, and we get scared again from the the Khmer camp because they still have they still have them on another camp, not too far. They said they're going to fight again, and they're going to burn. They're going to fight whatever they 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 want to. And that time, I, we have to run from the camp to the to the border to get help from the United Nations. They, when we pass, when we pass the road, we can see the, all a lot of truck online because they want to pick up all the refugee in the camp to the Thailand camp. And that time, I I have I just have my first daughter. Only one week, and I don't have anything to change. A lot, I have two dress to change, and I still have bleeding, but I still carry my baby, run to the run for for her to the United Nations, and then we get there, and they, you know, uh, they they bring them up put in the truck and drive to the Kawedang camp in Thailand. And I live in the Kawedang camp uh, maybe more than a year. And I get a sponsor from the Catholic a group of spon a Catholic church that I give you the the you know the paper. Uh, but I get that sponsor because it's my from my husband cousin. He is uh, his mom passed away, and his dad and his sister still in Thailand, and he ran to the camp and he had no nobody. Uh, and his name they picked up from the Catholic Church. He come to Canada first, and then he write a letter to the camp, and we find on the board that he looking for his family. That my, that my brother-in-law, he see that, and he, he write back to him that now we are in the camp. How many people, how many family in the camp? Tell him, and he asked his godfather that is uh, Dr. Richard. He's, he is a professor, Catholic University on Med Street. 
in Ottawa. And he the one he find all the group, uh, spon group church or spon uh, you know they sponsor sponsor, and that time we have uh, three family to sponsor to Canada, and he find all three church, the group or the, you know to sponsor us to here to Canada. Yeah, I come by the group of sponsor or the Catholic church. Said that you were stayed for about a year? Uh, I think maybe more than a year. More than a year. Okay. Okay. 19, uh, 19, 19, I think 19, I'm coming, it's nine, like around 1970. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It's maybe the end 1978. No, no, it's 1979, I'm sure. Yeah. At the end, in 1979, and until 1980, uh, 1982, yeah, more than a year, I live in the camp, and then when the, I have the name, you know, to come to Canada, and they move to uh, Chunburi camp, I live a few months, and then I come to uh, uh, another camp. Before you bought to the plane is uh, I forgot the name. Come down in. Uh, I kind like Buri Ram something. Chunburi? No, not Chunburi. I come to uh, I come to Chunburi and then to uh, I think Buri Ram something. Before you bought on the plane, you have to stay there wait until you know you fly. I stay there about uh, in uh, the Chunburi a few months. And then I have to go to that camp a few weeks before I fly to Canada. So in, in Kawi'an camp, can you describe what it's like over there? Uh, they be like, you know, like uh, uh, they gave us you know, the, uh, the United States, they, I think they buy everything from Thailand, eh? Thailand government. Like a bamboo, like a, a, what, a plastic, and what they had to make to build the tent, like, look like a tent, but it made long, long by the, the section. Yeah. And like section one, section two, section three, something like that. I, I'm living in the section three, and in that section they have, uh, I don't know, maybe over 100, Family, but in one in one uh, in one ten, like long one, they have four or five family. They just build and they just put, you know, like make the the wall, and this one family, this one family, that one family, like that. Were all sections are the same, or is it different? No, they're the same, all the same, yeah, all the same, yeah, all the same. And they give uh, every month they give a. Uh, Food, like enough. Like we live there, we have enough everything for food. <laughs> for food, they give up enough, and they have they have the they open hospital, they open daycare, and uh, uh, they open the school. But only uh, the accommodate school, not English. Only who know who can speak English, and they open, you know, like. To support that beside that. Did you go to school? Uh, I I don't I don't go because that they open the school is not what my class it the low one. Yeah, they open the low for the you know like the kid the young kid yeah, and I not go. And uh, but they had the Vietnamese section, and they open the English class. I think I think I I went about three months to study with them. Because they allow, we are allowed to, and that, and after I have my name is, you have to go to another camp, yeah, and that's it. Only three months English over there. I only know read A B C D something like that. Only three months, and that teacher it, he is Vietnamese. He very nice. He go to uh, to friend, yeah. He go to friend. Did you yeah. also get to work in the Kavidan camp? 
uh, in Kaodan camp, um, I just a few months uh, teaching the you know the the king the garden. I think only three months or three or four months something. Yeah. Teaching uh, Cambodian lesson. Yeah, Cambodian. Yeah, Cambodian lesson. Yeah, and that that's it. And then later you get to meet the people from the missionary uh, from other organizations, and then you get to apply to go to different countries. Uh, uh, uh I'm not. Not really, but uh, that time I did apply one uh, to go to the state because I have my cousin there, and they 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 know I'm in the Kawedan camp because when I'm in in Kawedan camp, I search all my family. Maybe they go around, and I know I have my cousin in United States, and I have my uncle in in France. And I write a letter both to them, which one they come first, and I can go. And I don't think I come to Canada. And uh, my my cousin in the state. She she sponsor me and my my mom to go to the state. But I don't have interview yet. But because my my. Uh, my brother-in-law, he write a letter to his cousin in Canada. This one, they come first. They come first. And I don't have a chance to go to the state. And I say, okay, but come to Canada only me, not my mom. And I'm not happy. And then when my name had to go to the Chunbury camp, my uncle from friend, he sponsored me and my mom. And when I get to Chunbri camp, uh, the embassy, friend embassy, they call me to interview. If I want to go with my mom to friend, they can take me go there. But I cannot go. I said, I cannot go because I have my baby with my husband. I don't want to, you know, my kid don't have a father. And I said, and I, I decide don't go with my mom. That's why I'm here in Canada. But still, I'm still lonely here. Before you get to Canada, when you first get on the plane with you and your husband and your child, how did you feel? What was uh, my emotion is, you know, like you've been separated from your family from that time. You always want to with your family, your own family, your immediate family. Like your husband and your husband family is not your family. You don't know you don't know them for sure. What you know later on, if your own family doesn't matter, what happened is still your family. And that time I'm not happy because I miss my mom, my brother and sister. I want to be with them, but I can't. All the way I'm, I'm crying, I'm sad, unhappy, until I get here and I see my sponsor of the church. Like, they're so nice, they're so kind. And that I, I, you know, I say, talk to myself. I meet all the good people. And they want to help me. They love me. I have to give them back my love to them. And I have to thank to them that what they support me. And then I, when I get here, I write a letter to my mom. I am I'm okay here. Mom, you can go to see my uncle in friend. I'm fine. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. And we will see each other sometime if we can. And then 
my mom say go to to friend and we chat you know some, we talk on the phone with sometime but sometimes I cannot talk a lot because in the phone line is very expensive yeah I cannot only write a letter you know like back and forth all the time with my mom with my brother and sister we still get you know like good connection together and I, I that time I, I know when I know my all my brother sister they study there they have a good they smart they good they you know like they good in school and they get a lot of credit even the, the people over there they always call my brother he as the super and that make me happy I'm not happy myself but I'm happy for my brother and sister there even now they stay there they have a good job they have a good business they have like almost everything I still miss them but I'm okay right now but I'm happy my life in Canada because I have three kids I have two daughters and one son and I have five grandkids right now I'm happy with them and I'm so thankful with the Canadian government and especially with my group sponsor or the Catholic Church that they've been support me so much and they always they call me a god sister but she uh, one of my group sponsors she passed away too she is my god sister god mother she loved me so much and see the one that made the paper that I, I show you? Yeah, see the one made that. Was she part of the church community? Yeah. Because see the one, uh, that time I have uh, three uh, sponsors. One they had to take to help me when we need to go for, you know, like to fill up the paper from the government, from the whatever. One and uh, one, she had to. Uh, bring me to shopping and they carry the money uh, every month they, have, they bring me you know to buy my grocery and pay for the run pay whatever for the uh, OC I have to go to school I have to go this or that she take care of that and one take care when, with the paper everything and the one that she she love me so much she uh, take care when we need to go see the doctor because she a nurse, she the nurse, and she she get she don't have a kid. She don't want the kid. She said if she have a kid, she cannot work for the people. She want to help people. She don't want the kid. And when she see me, she said you are my daughter. I love her so much. That much she love me. Uh, her name is uh, Hel Helen O'Connor. Yeah, that's her name. And she's been sponsoring you since the first day you arrived. Yep, yep. Because she is a, a part of the, uh, the group sponsor. And her position is to take me and my family to see the doctor. And uh, the one is uh, take care with the, with the paper. Stop. Her name is, uh, I, I forgot her last name. Her name is Rita. But she moved to stay, to live in Vancouver a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, the one she looked after when, you know, for the grocery, for whatever that her name is, Hillary. And she moved to the state too, because she is uh, not a Canadian. She is from the state. But she came here because her husband had to come to Canada for working. And she joined with the group of the church, yeah. And she go back to the state long time ago too. Only the one that um, stay with me all the time is uh, my godmother Helen O'Connor, yeah. But she passed away. I think almost uh, more than ten years right now. She passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How often did you get in contact with your sponsor when you arrived here? Uh, like almost every week. 
they come to see me. Yeah, they come to check whatever we have, what we will, we don't have, what happened, what's going on, what we need. Every week they come to see in the house. But when the first come uh, to Canada, they, uh, I get off at uh, Mirabel Airport in Montreal. I stay there one night. And morning the bus bring me to Ottawa. And uh, like some people, they don't have sponsor, that they sponsor by the government. Uh, they stay in the hotel. But for me, my sponsor, they wait me there. I think, uh, uh, I think in front of the hotel somewhere downtown. She wait me there and when I get off the bus, no, when I'm in the bus, uh, she go up and call the name. Call the name like how many, you know, and she bring me, put in the car and bring, put me, uh, bring me to the house that they, they find for, for me in Vanyi. The first apartment that I live is uh, uh, 299 on Mona Street in Vanyi. Yeah, that I live the first time. And then when I, uh, when the, I finished a sponsor, I think I'm, uh, a year and a half. And when I get to work, I find a place to live. Like, you know, I move from apartment to another house. Just rent it because I need space for, you know, for my kid. And apartment, we have only two bedroom and not enough room because here we cannot sleep like back home sleep. We have to have the room. Eh? And when I come here, when, before I come to Canada, I have uh, my daughter and my, my son. He's, he's still a baby. And when I come to Canada, I have my young daughter. And I, when I have three kids, I need more room for the kid. And we try to change the house. And then, you know, until later, and I buy the small house, just enough for my family. Yeah, and I keep working until now. But happened, um, last year, it happened to my husband. He been work, I think it overwork. He been work for the family and he been help to support to the temple that belong to us and he fell down at work. He have a, he fell down at work. He get very sick. He been in the hospital almost two months, CV hospital. And for the blood clot, now he lost one of his leg. They have to take it off. They cannot keep. If they keep the leg, the, that the blood is going to go through to kidney and go to the heart, go to the brain. He been, I think he been life support of almost a week in the hospital. Yeah, and the doctor cannot keep the leg. They have to take it off. But he can he okay right now because uh, they will build that prostate leg for him. He did went on Friday to try it on. I think maybe he will be okay after that because he still want to go work. But I, I don't think he can go. But he still want. He retired uh, this October. He will retire. He's age going to be sixty five. Are you still currently at work right now to support your family? Yeah, I'm still working. Right now, I'm 64, and he's 65. I'm still working. What type of work are you doing? Uh, I work at the candle down product, just so we make the stuff for the bedroom, comfortable like pillow, and uh, blanket, like everything for the bedroom. But we not sell it at the store. We make when uh, some boutique or some big store they order and we make it. We not sell like uh, at uh, Walmart or, you know, Zeller or something, not, not that. Yeah. And uh, the head company is in uh, Toronto. And we work here and it's, we some order from there, we make and then send to over there. Mm -hmm. I've been working there over 30 years right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you planning to retire soon? Uh, before I don't plan, but maybe this time I plan because it's a 
condition in the family, my husband, and you know, Jamie alone, it's kind of like hard to run everything. But I don't know yet. If my healthy is still in, in uh, good, in, you know, I still continue working. I stay home boring. And I'm not a person like to sit down and watch a TV or something like that, no. I like moving around. Maybe I'm still, you know, I don't know yet. So let's get back a bit uh, to your first year in Canada. Mm -hmm. And what was the most difficult part that you had to deal with? Oh, the most is the English. Because I, I don't speak, I don't understand. Only yes or no. That the, the main thing that difficult for me is the, the, the English. The English, yeah. The first, the first year. And but my, my sponsor sent me to, you know, like, uh, take the, the second language for, I think, six months, that. And then I start to work from home to home. Because I, they don't find, you know, like, they want me to learn more English. We am not go out, I cannot talk to nobody. They send me from this house to this house, you know, I can talk. And I can learn from that time. Until I, and after I work at the, uh, work at the, the garden, because I think it closed a long time ago. They call farm garden near airport. Yeah, I worked there a few months, and then I find the job. And I think it's too far for me. And then I work at uh, uh, what uh, the company right now. They they close to electronic. I work not too long, maybe a month, and still hard time for me because you know like. I don't have a daycare for my baby, and I don't have a, like support a lot. I keep, you know, like my time is very tight. And I said, it's too far for me to take two steps back to go work over there, and I'm not driving. And I know someone, and I find the company at Candle Down at uh, Lancaster. And I take only one bus to, to and not too far, you know. One year into Lancaster, it's not too far. And I said, okay, that is good for me. And I start, you know, to work there until now. And, but the company, it moved from Lancaster to, uh, from uh, Gladstone to Lancaster, and oh, more, more than 10 years now. They moved from uh, Gladstone to Lancaster. Yeah, I'm still stick in one company until now, over 30 years. When you first, since when you arrived here in, in Ottawa, how long did it take you to feel that you're at home? Uh, I think it take me eh, not too long. Because I feel warm, I feel comfortable, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, good when I see my, my godmother. Because every day she come to see me, and like, you know, like, always she brings something good to make me feel warm with her. That's why I feel good from that time. I feel like my mom is not far from me. And all the time when I have something, even I don't speak English good to her, I still have a, you know, like translator to tell her something. Yeah, and she always, if she's not coming, she send me the card. She buy me the cup, like she support me everything, and make me comfortable and make me happy, make me to stay here in Canada, nice and warm, and peaceful. And especially that time in Canada, it very safety, everything, the rule, the law, and you know, like we have, you know, like everything here is make the people want to come to Canada. Yeah, especially in school. Yeah, but I, ha I don't have a chance to go back to school. But e even I have a chance to go back to school, I cannot take it because 
I know my brain cannot take it because I've been a lot on that time. I lost. I, I lost. I cannot take it. I did try a few months, but I cannot take it. Is it because you yeah. don't remember uh, a lot? Or uh, really? For me, my like my brain easy to forget thing. Yeah, but we, when I'm young, back home before communist, I'm very good. But since from that time. I feel I'm lost, and I cannot take it. That's why I don't try to continue the school. I just want only my kid for school. What are your thoughts about Canada reaching out to help the Cambodian people and the Southeast Asian refugees? Uh, I think that is the top job for the Canadian government. But, you know, like I can hear every day, government is the, the most support on the, you know, the people that they need it. Because Canada, they have, uh, you know, they open heart and they, uh, they do everything for the people that they really need it. that I can see every day. I think Canada is the big one, in the top one, than any country. I don't mean I say anything, but I see every day by the new, only Canada is the, the top. Yeah. Did you share your story with your children? about? I did uh, when they small. Yeah, when they small, I did tell them some, and you know, the kids when they grow here, sometimes they don't get what you mean to tell them, but they know what happened back home. They know, but they don't know deeply, like, when you've been through to that time. But they understand what it mean. Because my son, one time he did drive when, uh, in school, uh, he did arrive at, uh, about, uh, it, it my uncle, it not his uncle, it's going to be his uh, grandfather. But he, he don't say grandfather, he said his uncle. He write a story for the teacher, like they, they killed my uncle, blah, blah, on the, you know, to, to uh, the teacher in his class. He did that one time. And my young daughter, he, she did draw the the picture, uh, and the, the teacher discerned me the, the letter I had to come uh, to see, uh, send a letter to my godmother to tell about my, my daughter. She draw the picture and they put it at a museum not too far from the Parliament Hill. Yeah, they put there, but I think now they take away because it a long time ago. Draw the picture. Is she how is she doing? Is she uh, I think somehow she understands something and she draws the picture because that time everybody had to draw and the teacher paid her drawing yeah, to bring there. I think that time she is around, I think she around 10 or something, 9 or 10. Yeah. Did you ever plan to go back to Cambodia? Uh, I've been three times. Yeah, three times already to see my family. But to me right now, I just want to see my family back home. I don't not stay there. Why is that? Mm, the way I see right now, I don't want to stay there. Only I want to visit. How about your mother? Do you still get in contact yeah. with your mother? Yeah, I, I did. I almost, you know, like every month, every week. Because, but see now, now she is not good too because of her condition. Uh, she just uh, relieved from the hospital on Wednesday. She not feel well. But I don't blame because her age is not, you know, is not young anymore, and that age is up and down. Yeah. Did you go to France? Uh, I went 
uh, last year I went to see her too. Yeah, because she's not well too. I went to see her last year. And when I come back, it happened to my husband. And, you know, that like I think it's like have a good and bad, good and bad, but I'm happy to live in Canada because I can, my life can be safety and, you know, uh, peaceful. And I can do what I want by, you know, the good way. And I can raise my kid and my kid can go to school can learn more things that they want to know. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to share or to add? <sighs> oh, I'm not too sure yet, but actually I'd like to thank you for your interview. I can bring uh, my story, I can share, and I can show the people if they, if they have, if they're happy to, to watch, to listen. Yeah, I'm happy. And like I can clear, you know, from my head and from my chest that I get support. I get that people know about past. And you know, like right now, I don't, I don't want anything. I want to be happy and healthy that I need it. Because what I have before communism, everything is gone. Everything is gone. I want only my family, healthy, happy, and to be together. What you have, you cannot keep it. And one more thing. Is there anything that we should learn from you, the Canadian or younger generations? Uh, yeah, that I, all the time, I, but I think the young generation right now, they don't really want to take or want to listen what you tell them to learning. Because, you know, now if they have more fancy, more technology and more faster, whatever. Uh, but I still, I still uh, like, you know, uh, to tell all the young generation, if you can do things that is the best for you, not break the rule, not uh, you know, like don't do the bad thing like the like drug, like something is not made you healthy, not made you feel good. Um, I think the young better stay in school straight. Stay straight in school and stay how far you can. And if you're not school, you find the job that you can support yourself. Don't depend on anybody. Don't depend on anybody. Doesn't matter your parent, your brother, your sister, because they're not going to be with you for your the rest of your life. You have to be your own. Have to be stronger. But here, all your you young, you all your kid, all the kid that you grow here, you free to go to school. You have food to, enough food to eat, you have place to live, and you have clothes to wear. You better make yourself to be a good kid. To be a good kid, a good Canadian. Thank you so much, Ming, for sharing your story, and thank you for your time for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for today that you let me in You're very to welcome. show, to tell my story. Anytime. You're very welcome. Thank you. And I, I still thank you to the uh, Canadian government that they opened the door for everybody to come here. Yeah. And what did you bring? Uh, this is the paper that my, my godmother, my sponsor, my god, okay. Uh, that my godmother, my sponsor, she bring to me, she show me. Uh, that is after that uh, I finished the contract with the group sponsor uh, a year and a half. And she bring this for me, I think she make it. And that, the front is the church. 
a Catholic church. It on Main Street. It's not too far from the Catholic uh, University. Yeah, that the, my group sponsor. That the church. And um, inside, they write about you know all the names the people work in the church, and about my when I come to Canada and about my you know my family. It's not long, but it's detailed, you know. Here, in this page, yeah. 